If you know a thing or two about London, you probably know about its expansive transportation system. London is home to one of the world's oldest transportation system, which carries an astounding 5 million people per day. However, in 2022, London's rail service added the addition of its newest line, the Elizabeth Line. The landmark project was completed in May of 2022 after 13 years of construction following its approval in July 2008. Originally named Crossrail, the project does exactly what you may think. It forms a rail line that goes across London. The Elizabeth Line's first year in operation saw 150 million journeys made. The line is a game changer for London and gives London's transportation system a dramatic increase in capacity, coverage, and frequency. The Elizabeth Line is not classified as part of the overground or underground systems. The Elizabeth Line does a number of things differently than the other lines. So what makes the Elizabeth Line so different? Let's go back to the name of the line again. Its original name is Crossrail, and its purpose is to bring people across London as fast and efficiently as possible. To the west, the line goes to Reading and Heathrow Airport, and to the east, it goes to Shenfield and Abbey Wood. When the line goes through central London, it heads underground, with stops at existing stations such as Paddington, Farringdon, Liverpool Street, and Stratford. At these stations, there are dozens of connections to other trains, which decrease travel times and increase the reach of the system by expanding to less dense places without rail service before. Most importantly, the stops are further apart from each other. This not only decreases stopping time, but allows trains to go at faster speeds. A trip from Liverpool Street to Paddington used to take 20 minutes before the Elizabeth Line, but now only takes 10 minutes. The Elizabeth Line runs at a maximum speed of 90 miles per hour compared to the 60 miles per hour of the other underground lines. However, this means that trains are slightly less frequent with a wait time of up to 5 to 15 minutes depending on the station. In May of 2023, after one year of operation, the Elizabeth Line shifted to its most frequent level of service with up to 24 trains per hour between Paddington Station and Whitechapel Station. Additionally, the Elizabeth Line has larger capacity per train compared to the underground. Each train can carry up to 1,500 passengers compared to the roughly 1,000 passengers of other lines. This increase results in less crowding during rush hour and more comfortable rides for everyone, including for people with luggage with its connection to Heathrow Airport. The Elizabeth Line has several more quality of life improvements when compared to the underground. The trains have larger width, more variety in seat layouts, fully accessible boarding, and air conditioning. The trains also have Wi-Fi as well, but from our experience, it doesn't work very well. Additionally, there are detailed displays telling you the order of stops, which car you are in, and even a diagram of the train. The Elizabeth Line has also installed platform screen doors on all their underground stations. This makes a safer environment where you can't fall down or get pushed down into the tracks. This is feasible on all the underground stations compared to the outdoor stations which have no ceilings. Each station in the Elizabeth Line was in addition to a current station or built completely from the ground up. All the stations share the same aesthetic with white paneled walls, large open tunnels, and multiple escalators and elevators. The success of the Elizabeth Line could not be more clear. London is a massive urbanized area, and there will be always a demand for additional service within its rail network. Dozens of extensions and other improvements are planned, but perhaps the most significant is the planned Crossrail 2. It shares the same design principles as the current Elizabeth Line, but instead in a north-south orientation. It has not received approval yet, but hopefully soon it will receive enough funding in the near future to get the funding needed and for construction to start. Other big cities can learn from the success of the Elizabeth Line and should seek to implement similar rail lines. Instead of extending and increasing service on their current lines, the best solution for an already established metro system is to build a brand new line with faster speeds and connections to existing overcrowded stations with multiple connections. Cities that already have well-established metro systems should look to implement a similar addition to theirs. 
The Elizabeth Line sets a new precedent for rail construction, which the world can learn from.